Dear customer, welcome to the SML Suzu family. We congratulate you upon selecting a reliable and trustworthy product from a wide range of product that SML Suzu offers. Before you start your business growth with this reliable product, we would like to inform you about some unique features and more importantly, some maintenance tips which would keep your vehicle on road for maximum amount of time. Meanwhile, you enjoy a complete peace of mind. So, let's get started. Beginning with some salient features, your vehicle is having a wide, beautiful and comfortable cabin space which keeps you going miles and miles without any fatigue. A multiple information display cluster meter with LCD screen which shows wide range of information about vehicle health and performance. A high quality factory fitted music system with voice calling and Bluetooth connectivity to keep you relaxed and entertained while you drive and not to miss a good quality mobile charging port. The vehicle is also equipped with an intelligent telematic solution for fleet management known as SML Sarthi which not only provides precise location tracking but in addition to it enables you to get connected with our 24 cross 7 breakdown support. By pressing this physical red button with help written on it in the dashboard continuously for 10 seconds or by pressing this icon in the SML Sarthi mobile application. In case of a breakdown, you can always connect with us through this toll-free number mentioned on the windscreen 1-800-419-8086 and also we have provided you with a WhatsApp number 9988-224365 wherein you can start a chat with us by just typing in hi for getting all the latest information related to the product in case you are looking for a new vehicle purchase for booking a service of your existing vehicle for any breakdown support or for submitting your valuable feedback in pursuit of our commitment to customer satisfaction we have recently introduced two new services first is sml vishwas which is an annual maintenance program wherein you can choose from our customized plans suitable to your needs based upon your vehicle usage and annual maintenance package for a very low cost ranging from 29 paisa to 72 paisa per kilometer for trucks and buses and from 38 paisa to 72 paisa per kilometer for the tippers and second is sml extend which is an extended warranty program covering major driveline aggregates such as engine gearbox and differential assembly wherein you can get an extended warranty of two years or unlimited kilometers over and above your existing warranty terms which comes for a very nominal cost. These two programs can be enrolled up to 60 days from the vehicle purchase date and for more information regarding this you can contact our dealership staff. Not to miss during vehicle registration for referring the chassis number you will find it engraved here at front right hand side of the chassis and the engine number is engraved here on the engine. Now coming to the service and maintenance part. As you know, this is a BS6 compliant vehicle. The system is having a fuel injected engine and an exhaust gas treatment system to meet all the emission norms. Wherein AdBlue, which is a special aqueous solution of urea, is being used to treat the harmful exhaust gases. So to start with, first let us move towards the battery section from where the vehicle will draw its initial power for the starting operation. This is the battery and this is the isolation switch. To start the vehicle, this switch should be in the on condition. So, if you rotate it in the clockwise direction, it becomes on. And if you rotate it in the anti-clockwise direction, it becomes off. In the off condition, no power supply will go to the vehicle and nothing will operate. Please note, whenever you end your trip and the vehicle is to be stopped for overnight, you need to switch off this isolation switch so as to save the battery discharge and also to protect the system from any type of mishappening during your absence. Also remember that you have to wait for 2 minutes after switching off the ignition before you switch off the main isolation switch because the vehicle ECU needs this much minimum time to properly shut down. Now let us see the location of the fuse box and availability of spare fuses. So to protect the electrical components of the vehicle from any overcurrent arising due to short circuit, fuses are being used. In your vehicle, you will find these fuses at two locations. First place is 
near to the starter. Here you can see these two big fuses are there. So if by chance you are facing some problem related to electrical supply in the vehicle, you can check these two main fuses for any blow off. Second location where you will find the fuses is in the dashboard. Here you can see all the fuses are present and on the flap is the sticker pasted showing the functionality of these fuses in which relevant circuit the particular fuse are present. Here in this line are the three spare fuses which you can use in case of any emergency. The most important thing that you need to note here is that if you find any fuse blown off then replace the fuse with the same rating fuse. For example, if this 10 ampere fuse meant for the headlight as you can check here gets blown off then you need to put only the 10 ampere fuse as replacement. Using a higher rating fuse or a fuse wrapped with a wire not only leads to warranty getting void but also is a major cause of vehicle wiring harness getting burnt which if not controlled can lead to some major disasters such as vehicle fire. So in case where you have replaced the fuse with a correct rating fuse and that is also repeatedly getting blown off then you need not to do any further trials and immediately contact your nearest dealer or customer contact number and not to miss for your safety in case of any fire incidents always use the fire extinguisher present inside the cabin in case of truck you can see the fire extinguisher is placed here behind the seats and for the buses especially for the school buses an integrated fire detection and suppression system is provided where in case of any fire originating near to the engine the system will automatically detect and activate the fire suppression system also fire extinguishing cylinders are present inside the bus and can be used in case of any emergency here you have have to pay attention to a very important point that the fire extinguishing cylinders have an expiry date mentioned on them so always make sure that you refill the fire extinguishing cylinders as per their expiry dates now let us see the location of the auxiliary couplers so for any extra accessory which we need to install in the vehicle like an extra fan room light illuminated god icon etc it is strictly advised not to cut the wires at any random location and get the accessories installed as this can seriously affect other electrical systems in the vehicle and also leads to warranty getting void. But no worries as we have provided specific fuse protected couplers in the wiring harness where you can get these accessories installed. Here you can see in case of truck this green colored coupler having the accessory sticker. It is meant for the accessory connection. This is having a permanent positive supply, a permanent ground and a 12 volt supply at the ignition on. Now after some basic things let's move on to understand the information related to vehicles health and performance that is being displayed on the meter set and also learn about the various telltale symbols present and what to do in case any of the warning lamp is glowing. So to start with this is the speedometer where you can check the vehicle speed. This is the RPM meter also known as tachometer which displays the engine rotations in rotations per minute. This is the temperature gauge which displays the engine temperature and this gauge is the fuel level gauge which shows the level of fuel in the fuel tank. Further let's understand some important warning lights present on the meter set. The first light is related to exhaust brake signal. This signal here is to notify for the exhaust brake operation. When the vehicle is going down the hill, you can engage the exhaust brake functionality for reducing the vehicle speed without much relying on the vehicle service brakes. So, for engaging the exhaust brake functionality, you have to just shift this lever in the combination switch towards the upward direction. Here you can see that the telltale sign starts to glow. But this does not mean that the exhaust brake is active now. It only means that the exhaust brake functionality has been activated and while going downhill with gear engaged whenever the accelerator pedal is released the exhaust brake will get activated. The second light is related to high coolant temperature. Normally the vehicle will operate in this temperature zone as shown here on the gauge but if there is some abnormality in the system like if the coolant is less or engine oil is less it can cause the engine to excessively heat up and this telltale sign starts to blink parallelly buzzer will also start to beep so in this case immediately drive the vehicle to side of the road and stop it 
चेक फॉर एनी लूजनेस और ब्रेकेज ऑफ द फैन बेल्ट कूलेंट लीकेज और ऑयल स्टारवेशन एंड इमीडिएटली कंटेक्ट एस एम एल सर्विस सेंटर हेल्पलाइन नंबर वन एट डबल जीरो फोर वन नाइन एट जीरो एट सिक्स एज इफ द प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट रेक्टिफाइड ऑन टाइम इट मे लीड टू इंजन फेलियर ड्यू टू हाई टेम्परेचर नेक्स्ट वार्निंग लाइट इज चेक इंजन लाइट दिस वार्निंग लाइट ग्लोज इफ योर व्हीकल इज हैविंग सम माइनर इशू और सम फॉल्ट कोड विच विल नॉट हैव एनी मेजर इफेक्ट ऑन द इंजन परफॉर्मेंस सो इवन इफ दिस साइन इज ग्लोइंग नो नीड टू पैनिक जस्ट इन्फॉर्म अबाउट इट टू द सर्विस पर्सन वेन एवर यू गो फॉर रेगुलर सर्विस टू द डीलरशिप मूविंग ऑन नेक्स्ट हेयर इज द लो फ्यूल वार्निंग लैम्प दिस वार्निंग साइन ग्लोज when the level of fuel in the fuel tank goes below a set point you will also note that the fuel gauge pointer will reach the red mark and this lamp starts to blink in this case you need to immediately find some nearby fuel station and refuel your vehicle but in case a situation arises where your vehicle runs out of diesel and stops you will have to get the diesel filled and in addition to this also do hand priming of the crs filter so as to remove the air lock which has occurred due to fuel starvation so for removing the air lock we will demonstrate you the process first loosen this air bleeding screw now hand prime this pump to feed in the fuel you will notice air bubbles coming out of the bleed screw with the diesel keep on priming after the air bubbles disappear and you start getting diesel without any air at that moment retighten the bleed screw now again do the hand priming you will notice that pump gradually becomes hard and also ensure there is no leakage from the bleed screw now you can crank the engine you will notice that the vehicle starts after taking a long crank next light is the air cleaner choke indicator this is one of the most important warning sign in the bs6 vehicle as it informs about the health of the air cleaner if the air cleaner is choked then engine will not get enough amount of air and will lead to serious performance issues including a major damage to the egt unit so if you are getting this warning light on your dashboard immediately contact your nearest dealership or our toll free customer care number here you can see that the air cleaner unit is made up of two filters this outside filter is the primary filter and this inner one is the secondary filter in normal road and dust conditions the primary filter is to be changed at every 40000 kilometers and secondary the inner one is to be changed with the third replacement of the primary filter means that in normal condition it would be replaced at every 120000 kilometers but in heavy dust conditions the primary filter is to be replaced whenever the choke indicator light glows on the meter set and replace the secondary filter along with every third replacement of the primary filter the next warning light is related to the coolant level this sign warns us about the low level of coolant inside the radiator but before learning more about this sign let us understand about the coolant flow in the vehicle this is the sub tank and this is the radiator here you can see that sub tank is filled with the coolant and we are having a minimum and maximum level mentioned here normally the coolant level in the sub tank should always remain between the minimum and maximum level but if the level of coolant becomes less in the radiator there will be a depression created in the radiator and the coolant is sucked from the sub tank to the radiator through the return valve inbuilt in the cap but in the older vehicles there are chances that the suction from the sub tank stops happening in that case always check the coolant level by removing the radiator cap when the vehicle is in cold condition here you need to pay attention that before removal of the radiator cap always ensure that vehicle is in cool down condition otherwise there are high chances that the boiling coolant under pressure may blow out and cause serious injury also not to forget please ensure that the rubber seal provided in the radiator cap it should be present and should not be removed moving on The next warning light is related to engine oil pressure. This warning light indicates about the engine oil pressure being low. In normal condition, this check light will glow once you switch on the ignition and will go off when the engine starts and oil pressure is built up. If this warning lamp comes while the vehicle is in operation, drive the vehicle to the side of road and switch off the ignition. Examine the oil level through the dipstick. If it is low, 
चेक फॉर एनी एक्सटर्नल लीकेजेस एंड टॉप अप विद जेनुअन एस एम एल इंजन ऑयल और इमीडिएटली गेट कनेक्टेड विद द नियरेस्ट एस एम एल सूजू डीलर इन रेगुलर ऑपरेशन ऑलवेज मेक इट अ प्रैक्टिस टू इंस्पेक्ट द इंजन ऑयल थ्रू द डिपस्टिक ऑन वीकली बेसिस फॉर विच लेट एस डेमोन्स्ट्रेट यू द राइट मेथड सो फर्स्ट पार्क द व्हीकल ऑन अ प्लेन सर्फेस एंड अलाउ इट टू कूल डाउन नाउ टेक आउट द डिपस्टिक and wipe it with a clean cloth again reinsert the dipstick in the engine and take it out in okay condition the level of engine oil will be in between l and f if the engine oil level has gone below l then it needs to be topped up using sml genuine engine oil and if the level is more than f then you need to immediately contact your nearest dealership moving on to the periodic maintenance as you are aware that engine oil is used for lubrication of the running engine parts so as to keep them protected from regular wear and tear with the running kilometers and time the lubrication property of the oil tends to lose so to protect your engine from this wear and tear it is recommended to change the engine oil as per the service schedule mentioned in the owner's manual which is 40000 kilometers or one year whichever falls earlier for diesel trucks and buses and 20000 kilometers or one year whichever falls earlier for diesel tippers and for all the cng variants next warning light is related to combi oil filter the engine oil is constantly being filtered so as to remove any unwanted impurities which may have got mixed due to the wear and tear of the engine The oil warning system is designed so as to safeguard your vehicle's oil filtration system. Here you can see this is the engine oil filter. So, if the filter gets choked, then the combi oil filter light starts to glow and unfiltered oil starts to enter the system. So, you need to get the filter replaced. The change interval of this filter is 40,000 kilometers considering normal operation. But if the warning light glows prior to that, get connected with your nearest dealer for the vehicle inspection and filter change moving on next is the obd lamp this warning lamp will glow once the ignition switch is turned on and will automatically go off when the engine is started but if the lamp is staying permanently on even after the engine is started then this points to some abnormality in the vehicle sometimes there may be a minor issue in the vehicle which may automatically get healed in subsequent trips but if the lamp is staying on permanently for 5 to 6 trips and in addition to that you are also getting some fault codes on the meter set lcd then this points to some problem in the vehicle which needs to be diagnosed and rectified like here you can see that this lamp is glowing continuously and also the fault code p0122 is coming on the meter set this means that there is some issue in the vehicle which needs to be addressed on priority by contacting sml customer support next is the brake fluid level warning lamp which for the hydraulic brake vehicles glows when the fluid level is low in the brake fluid chamber this low level of fluid will cause a serious impact on the braking efficiency of the vehicle and is a huge safety concern so you need to regularly monitor the brake fluid levels and if found low immediately top up the brake fluid using genuine sml branded dot 4 fluid here you can see the minimum and maximum level are mentioned on the brake fluid reservoir and ideally level should always remain between the two and for the air brake vehicles this lamp will glow until the set value of air pressure is maintained in the system this next one is the battery charging light this warning light shows on the meter set once the ignition is switched on and will automatically go off when the engine is started but if this light is glowing continuously even after the engine has started this indicates that the alternator is not able to charge the battery parallelly you will also notice that the voltage showing on the meter set will not cross the 12.5 volt mark even when you raise the rpm by pressing the accelerator in this case you can inspect the alternator belt for any breakage and also check for any fuse blown off near to the starter contact sml dealer for further electrical or mechanical rectification as if you fail to do so it will lead to vehicle getting stopped moving on to one of the most important warning light in the system which is the water and fuel level warning but before discussing about this warning lamp 
Let's have a look at the fuel filtration system of the vehicle. Here you can see fuel is stored in the diesel tank which moves to the primary filter. Here the first stage of filtration happens. The change interval of this primary filter is after every 20,000 kilometers. Ensure you do not miss that as if missed it can cause unfiltered fuel to reach the common rail system and further causing damage to it. Next component in the fuel filtration system is the CRS filter. This filter not only does the second stage of fuel filtration but also performs the function of sedimenter means it separates out water from the fuel. This sensor located here detects the water level inside the filter and based on the signal the warning lamp glows on the meter set. The change of this CRS filter is after every 60,000 kilometers or 18 months whichever falls earlier. You need to strictly follow this change interval so as to protect the costly components of the fuel injection system. Now in case the water in fuel light glows then you need to immediately drain the water accumulated inside the filter as if you keep on running the vehicle with this warning lamp on there are a huge chances that water will enter the fuel injection system causing severe damage to it as well as the EGT system components. Now let us demonstrate the process of draining the water from the CRS filter. First park the vehicle on a safe place and switch it off. Now remove this water in fuel sensor coupler and open the sensor by turning it in the counterclockwise direction. Let all the water accumulated inside be drained out until no diesel comes out from the drain plug. Now plug the sensor back in the drain plug and securely tight it in the clockwise direction. Loosen the bleed screw and start hand priming. You will notice diesel with air bubbles starts coming out of the bleed screw. Carry on the hand priming until diesel without air bubbles starts to come out. Now tighten the bleed screw and again hand prime until the pump becomes heavy. Start the engine and ensure there is no fuel leakage from the drain plug or the bleed screw. Here you have to pay special attention that if the water in fuel light is frequently coming and CRS filter requires frequent draining then get the fuel tank cleaned at your nearest SML dealer and also change the fuel filling station. Till now we have discussed about warning lamps that were also present in earlier BS4 variants and now we will explain you two warning lamps that are newly introduced in BS6 vehicles. First is the DPF regeneration light. Before discussing about this warning lamp, let's quickly go through the exhaust gas treatment system fitted in the vehicle. So here you can see that the exhaust flows through this unit which is having three subsections. The first unit is the DOC, diesel oxidation catalyst. The second unit is DPF, diesel particulate filter which filters the carbon particles known as soot. And the third one is the SCR, Selective Catalytic Reduction, where the exhaust gases are chemically treated with the aqueous urea solution known as AdBlue. And here is the tank where the AdBlue is stored. Coming back to the diesel particulate filter, as I have already told you, this filter captures the particulate matter known as soot present in the exhaust gases. So this soot keeps on collecting inside the DPF. Now, when this collected soot mass crosses a specific limit, the DPF requires cleaning and this process of cleaning is known as regeneration, where some amount of diesel is made to reach the DPF and this diesel when it gets burnt inside the DPF cleans all the collected soot mass. The regeneration is an automatic process without much manual intervention and it is further of three types. Based on the type, the DPF lamp glows accordingly in green, yellow and red color. So now if this lamp indication is glowing in green, this indicates about automatic regeneration process going on in the DPF. And in addition to the green lamp, you will also find the message regeneration activated flashing on the meter set. Usually the automatic regeneration will happen after every 100 hours of engine operation and will last for about 25 minutes. You need to just continuously keep on running the vehicle unless the light goes off. But in case you need to stop the vehicle, try not to switch off the engine as the regeneration will automatically end within 20 to 25 minutes. But then also, if you need to switch off the engine, no issues. 
नेक्स्ट टाइम अगेन वेन द सूट मास्क विल क्रॉस द सेट पॉइंट द लाइट विल ग्लो एंड रीजनरेशन विल हैपन ऑटोमेटिकली नाउ लेट अस सी इफ द लैम्प इज ग्लोइंग इन येलो कलर यू विल नोटिस द डी पी एफ लैम्प ग्लोइंग इन येलो कलर एंड ऑल्सो द मैसेज पार्क रीजनरेशन रिक्वायर्ड स्टॉप द व्हीकल फ्लैशिंग ऑन द मीटर सेट दिस इंडिकेट्स दैट द ऑटोमेटिक रीजनरेशन प्रोसेस हैपनिंग इन द व्हीकल इज नॉट इनफ टू बर्न आउट द सूट मास्क एंड इट नीड्स टू बी स्टॉप्ड एंड रीजनरेटेड सो फॉर कैरिंग आउट दिस टाइप ऑफ रीजनरेशन यू नीड टू पार्क द व्हीकल एट अ सेफ लोकेशन शिफ्ट द गेयर लीवर टू न्यूट्रल पोजिशन एंड एंगेज द पार्क ब्रेक एंड स्टार्ट द व्हीकल आफ्टर अबाउट वन मिनट ऑफ स्टार्टिंग द व्हीकल बिगिन द प्रोसेस ऑफ रीजनरेशन बाय प्रेसिंग दिस सेट बटन ऑन द मीटर सेट फॉर अबाउट मोर देन फाइव सेकेंड्स यू विल नोटिस दैट द व्हीकल आर पी एम राइजेज ऑटोमेटिकली टू टू थाउजेंड आर पी एम एंड दिस विल कॉन्टिन्यू फॉर अबाउट ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स आफ्टर दैट द आर पी एम विल रिटर्न टू नॉर्मल एंड द व्हीकल कैन बी रन नॉर्मली वेन द रीजनरेशन प्रोसेस इज अंडर वे डू नॉट प्रेस द एक्सिलेटर पैडल क्लच पैडल और ब्रेक पैडल एज दिस विल इमीडिएटली स्टॉप द रीजनरेशन प्रोसेस एंड ऑल्सो नॉट टू मिस वाइल रीजनरेशन द एग्जॉस्ट गैसेज कमिंग आउट आर एट अ वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर ऑफ अप्रॉक्सीमेटली फाइव हंड्रेड टू सिक्स हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस सो काइंडली एंश्योर नो इन्फ्लामेबल मटीरियल लाइक डेड लीव स्क्रैप्स ऑफ पेपर ग्रीस ड्रम्स डीजल ड्रम्स एटसेट्रा आर इन द क्लोज विसिनिटी ऑफ द व्हीकल नाउ आई विल टेल यू अबाउट द थर्ड टाइप ऑफ रीजनरेशन इन केस द रीजनरेशन लैम्प स्टार्ट ग्लोइंग इन रेड कलर सो इफ यू इग्नोर द येलो रीजनरेशन लैम्प then ultimately the lamp will start glowing in red color with message regeneration required urgently go to the dealer flashing on the screen which indicates that the level of soot has reached a very high level and the vehicle requires regeneration urgently in this case you are advised to immediately stop the vehicle and contact the dealership or our toll free number as for regeneration in such case special diagnostic tool is required if you keep on ignoring the red regeneration light then ultimately the vehicle will go into rpm restriction mode with rpm getting restricted to 1500 rpm and also there are a high chances of dpf getting damaged incurring high repair cost also sometimes if the vehicle encounters some abnormality in the air or fuel system then you may encounter red regeneration light glowing without any green or yellow light and the vehicle rpm will get restricted to 1500 rpm in such cases immediately contact customer support number the next newly introduced warning light in bs6 is nox light this is the last but one of the most critical warning lamp especially introduced in the bs6 vehicle so whenever the vehicle will encounter any problem due to which its emission gets disturbed this warning lamp will start to glow and in addition warning sign will start to flash on the meter set lcd screen in this situation you have to immediately contact the dealership or customer care toll free number as in case if the problem is not rectified within permissible time limit of 20 hours so as per the government restrictions vehicle will eventually go into limp home mode which means vehicle speed will get restricted to 20 km per hour so far we have explained you about the warning lights present on the meter set now let us quickly go through the information available on the meter set lcd firstly here we have a digital clock displaying the time in 12 hours format here you can see is the ambient atmospheric temperature here is the odometer reading being displayed informing how much total distance your vehicle has covered till date This is the AdBlue level gauge displaying the level of the AdBlue present inside the AdBlue tank. The urea consumption in the vehicle is about 5% of the total diesel consumption. This means that if the vehicle is consuming 100 liters of diesel, it will also consume approximately 5 liters of urea. The tank fitted has a capacity to store 14 liters of urea. Here you can see that 8 bars are being displayed on the meter set. You can refill the AdBlue in the tank as per your wish whenever you require. Also, when the meter set displays two bars, you can top up the tank 
by filling complete bucket of 10 liters of urea. If the level of AdBlue goes to a very low level where only one bar is being displayed on the meter set and that too starts to blink along with buzzer will also start to beep. In this case, driver is advised to immediately top up the AdBlue or the vehicle will go into limpo mode with 20 km per hour speed restriction if the AdBlue gets finished. So if such a situation arises where all the AdBlue present in the vehicle gets finished and the vehicle has got into the limpo mode of 20 km per hour, then it is advised to go to the nearest SML dealership or nearest pump and refill the AdBlue with SMLI recommended AdBlue brands. After that, when you restart the vehicle, the speed restriction will go off automatically. So the major precaution is related to the refilling of AdBlue. Always use SMLI recommended AdBlue for your vehicle. SMLI has extensively tested and recommends these seven widely available brands for the AdBlue. These are Vidal, Valvoline, Cummins, NPL Blue Sky, ABI Shawatech, IOCL and CAM, which can be anytime purchased in a packing of 10 liters from our dealerships. Always make a habit to keep one or two AdBlue buckets extra with you in case you are going on a trip. Using a local make or non-recommended AdBlue will lead to many serious performance issues in your vehicle, like loss of effectiveness in controlling emissions, causing the vehicle to go into 20 km per hour speed restriction mode as local make AdBlue will not be able to keep the emissions under control. Local AdBlue will cause the deposition of urea inside the EGT system, causing damage to the costly EGT system components like urea pump, urea injector, NOx sensors and the SCR system. Secondly, always follow the correct process and ensure full cleanliness with respect to dust or any type of oil contamination while refilling the AdBlue in the vehicle as even a little amount of oil contamination in the AdBlue whether it is diesel or engine oil can cause the system to malfunction. This oil contamination majorly causes the failure of AdBlue tank supply module and is an additional cost burden on the user to get it replaced as it is beyond repair. But you need not to worry as if you follow a little precaution related to the AdBlue refilling, these components will run trouble free for entire lifetime. So always use fresh funnel for pouring the AdBlue and reuse of the same funnel is not at all recommended. Funnel once used for pouring diesel, engine oil or any other fluid is strictly not to be used for refilling the AdBlue as doing so will lead to contamination in urea and may eventually damage the AdBlue supply module. When visiting the fuel station for any type of refueling, kindly be extra aware. Ensure that the pump operator does not fill the diesel in the AdBlue tank, as if this happens, the AdBlue tank will get damaged instantly, which will cause you an extra burden of repair cost. So till now, we have covered all the basic introduction of the vehicle system. and. More importantly, the maintenance tips. Now, in the last part of the video, we will cover some general precautions which you need to follow in your daily running of the vehicle. Beginning with, let's look at some precautions that need to be followed while getting any welding operation done on your vehicle. Friends, there is a high tendency of electronic components like engine ECU, meter set, sensors, ABS ECU, etc. getting damaged if these are exposed to high voltage spikes that are being generated during the welding operation. So, before getting any of the welding operation done on the vehicle, please go through the following instructions. First of all, remove the battery couplers, positive as well as the negative. Secondly, it is highly recommended to remove the engine ECU couplers before starting the operation. Here, you can see the correct method of removal of the couplers. Do not forcefully remove these couplers as doing so can damage them. Kindly take help of dealership technician for any type of removal and refitment operation. The flying welding spatters can be very dangerous as these hot spatters 
can damage the plastic and rubber components like wiring harness, air and fuel hoses, coolant lines, urea pipes etc. So you need to be extra careful by covering all the vulnerable areas by a metal or wooden sheet before starting any welding operation. Now moving further, we will tell you about the correct method in case you need to jump start your vehicle. So this is a very common situation in the field that if the battery gets drained, you will be requiring a jump start operation to make the vehicle operational and on road. So let us have a look at the correct method of performing a jump start operation. So this is the vehicle with drained out battery and while cranking you will see the voltage is falling down and vehicle is not getting started. Now bring the charged battery and this has to be parallelly connected with the vehicle battery in a manner where positive terminal of the auxiliary battery is to be connected firmly with the positive terminal of the vehicle battery. And similarly, the negative terminal of the auxiliary battery has to be connected firmly with the negative terminal of the vehicle battery. Now you crank the vehicle and after the vehicle starts, carefully remove the auxiliary battery connections. But sometimes in field, people replace the vehicle drained out battery with an auxiliary battery for jump start operation. And when the vehicle starts, they again put back the drained out battery. Kindly note, such type of operation is strictly prohibited as doing so will cause damage to the alternator and other electronic systems in the vehicle. So friends, at last, we will once again congratulate you upon choosing an excellent product and to get the best performance out of your vehicle in terms of mileage and aggregate life, we will leave you with some of the good driving practices to be followed. So when starting the vehicle first time in the morning, let it stay in idling for one minute before pressing the accelerator pedal. This exercise will give the vehicle ample time for proper engine oil circulation. If you accelerate the vehicle immediately after starting, there are a high chances of turbocharger getting damaged due to the oil starvation. Similarly, when you end your journey, keep it in idling for one minute before turning off the engine. Periodically check the tire pressure of the vehicle and maintain the recommended tire pressure as given in the owner's manual. Under inflated tires or over inflated tires will lead to faster wear and tear of the tires. Under inflated tires significantly affect the vehicle mileage, also lead to faster wear and tear, whereas over inflated tires will cause uneven tire wear. While driving, do not rest your foot on the clutch as it results in partial engagement of the clutch, causing slippage and excessive wear and tear of the clutch plate. During gear shifts, press the clutch pedal fully and avoid clutch riding. When in traffic, Shifting to a lower gear is highly recommended. To improve upon the fuel mileage, try to drive the vehicle at a constant speed after shifting to the top gear or overdrive gear. Maintain the engine RPM within a range of 1500 to 2000 RPM and try to avoid rapid acceleration and harsh braking. Use of exhaust brake is strictly recommended while going downhill to increase upon the brake life. And to end with, for your safety, and happiness of your loved ones. Always wear a seat belt while driving. Do not drink and drive and do not use mobile phone while driving.